Have you ever played Terraria and wondered just how valuable the gold you've worked so hard for is actually worth? Or when you're fighting zombies, do you ever have that creeping feeling that maybe, just maybe, zombies might be real? Have you ever considered that the Eye of Cthulhu is just the Eye? What does that mean for the rest of Cthulhu? Is there some giant eyeless monster running around in the lands of Terraria? Well, today we find out. Welcome to the Science of Terraria. Let's start out by determining the height of the blocks and the height of the player character. In this case, we can use a handy depth meter to determine these numbers. Turns out that each block is about two feet high. The player character is three blocks high or six feet. Using this information, let's consider the player character's jumping ability. Under normal conditions, the player character can jump about seven blocks high or 14 feet in the air. For comparison, the kangaroo can jump about 10 feet into the air. Let's move on to speed. After a little bit of testing, we can estimate the player character can run about 45 blocks or 90 feet in just four seconds. With a rate of speed of 22.5 feet per second and 60 seconds in a minute, the player character can run roughly 1,350 feet per minute. To expand the math to something more relatable to real life, with 60 minutes in an hour, the player character is traveling 81,000 feet per hour. Converting this to miles with 5,280 feet in a mile, our top speed for the character is an impressive 15 miles per hour. For comparison, the average human can run between 4 to 6 miles per hour, and professional runners achieve small bursts of speed of up to 20 miles per hour. In Terraria, the player character can hold their breath without any additional equipment for about 23 seconds. In the real world, the average human can hold their breath for about 3 to 5 minutes. Our player character has a bit of practice left to be on par with reality. Did you know the record time for holding your breath underwater is an impressive 24 minutes and 37 seconds? Budimir Sobat currently holds this record, which is over 64 times as long as our player character. Now that we've got our basics about the player character, let's explore the environment. Given the size of the blocks, we can determine the average height of the trees. The tree size can vary in Terraria, but on average, let's say most trees are about 15 blocks. If we use our previous math, most trees come in at around 30 feet. For comparison, most redwood trees can be as tall as 300 feet or more. The weapons of Terraria can vary depending on what you choose. Let's examine some of the ones we've seen in recent playthroughs. Have you ever seen a zombie hand swinging through the air? Well, you can swing the zombie hand in Terraria the length of three blocks or six feet. To put that in comparison, a long sword is anywhere from three to four feet long. Moving up to better weapon options, a great sword can reach lengths of up to six feet. Basically, this means that our player character is using the equivalent of a great sword, which is probably not very light to carry. In game, the player at the right angle can shoot arrows off screen. This works out to be about 60 blocks or 120 feet. To put that into perspective, the Olympic archery distance is 70 meters or 230 feet. So while the player character can wield some impressive swords, I think they need to work on their arms a bit. Let's move on to the enemies the player encounters. One of the most interesting enemies the player can encounter is the flying fish. Surely, fish can't actually fly, right? Right? No. There are no real fish that use powered flight. There is, however, a fish that can use its fin to propel itself out of the water at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. The flying fish in-game could be, in theory, the same fish, but only if you are near a body of water. This propulsion wouldn't work in the rain or anything like that. What about zombies, you say? Thankfully, zombies are not real. However, However, there are some instances of zombie-like parasites. 
There is such a thing as a parasitic fungus that transforms ants into zombies. This fungus takes control of the mind of the host ant, causing it to abandon its nest. Then once the ant has died, the fungal spores will spread to the other ants, turning them into a horde of zombies. It's currently believed that the parasite does not have the ability to spread to humans. But I'm always going to be on the lookout now. Likely one of the first bosses you will encounter is the King Slime boss. Let's break down this slime to goo to really understand just how large it is. King Slime is roughly four times the height of the player character, or about 24 feet. Similar to the slime boss in Slay the Spire, we are going to assume that the King Slime is more or less round in shape. We can use the following formula to determine the volume of the Slime King. In this instance, the R is the radius, or 12 feet. When you calculate everything out, we get 7,238.23 cubic feet. While this is impressive, we need to dig a little bit deeper. We can roughly estimate that there are 116 cups in a cubic foot, and we know there are 8 ounces per cup. If we estimate 1 ounce of slime weighs 1 ounce, then we can use a bit of math to determine the king slime's weight. Ultimately, we can hypothesize that the king slime weighs about 430,674 pounds, or just over 215 tons. That's a lot of slime. While this might sound a bit absurd, and it is, the blue whale which is considered the largest animal on the planet, can weigh as much as 200 tons. Another early boss you can summon is the Eye of Cthulhu. This boss is fairly large, and after some careful counting, we determined the boss is about nine blocks high. This in turn means the Eye of Cthulhu is roughly 18 feet tall. But this gets me thinking. This boss is just an eye. How large is the full creature? The potential is basically unlimited. Let's start off by assuming the creature is roughly humanoid shaped. Let's do some comparisons. Consider the average human eye is about an inch high and roughly 1 64th the average height of the human body. If we translate that over to the eye of Cthulhu, we can guesstimate the total height of the monster is about 1,152 feet. To put that into perspective, this creature is roughly half the size of the largest building in the world. The Burj Khalif in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, which stands at a staggering 2,717 feet tall. For this part of the conversation, let's go back to the player character for a moment, but take it to the extreme. We are going to look at the stone blocks as they likely weigh the most out of anything you can collect and they have a stacking limit of 9,999. If we consider that a single stone is roughly a third of the size of the player, or 2 feet by 2 feet by 2 feet, we are looking at 8 cubic feet. Similar to our previous search results, we can estimate our stone weighs about 150 pounds per cubic foot, for a total weight of just over 1,200 pounds. That's crazy, but we're not done yet. Now we must go back to the stacking limit idea. With a stacking limit of 9,999, the full stack of stones that our player character is hauling around could weigh around 11,998,800 pounds. This is an insane number to consider, but if I told you that it is nothing when you consider this is just for a single stack of items. A player character can hold up to 40 item stacks. Ready for some ridiculously high numbers? Well, let's assume you wanted to fill your player character full of maximum stone stacks. Given everything we know, this means in the end your player character would be holding 479 million 952,000 pounds of stone. To help put that into more manageable numbers, that's the equivalent of 239,976 tons. Yes, tons. 
which means our player character could easily lift the king slime in its entirety. That's still a huge number, so let's consider that the average passenger plane weighs a little less than 500 tons. For the purposes of this example, we will round up for clean math. Using that number, we can determine the player character is carrying around the weight of about 480 passenger planes. Even still, this number is off the charts. We went through every iteration to try to reduce this number into something that's more understandable. And it, there just isn't anything out there. Just so much, it's, this number is just ridiculously high. Now that we've gotten the sizes out of the way, let's move on to the real goods. Gold, or rather coins in general. Like most games, Terraria has a system of coins the player can use to purchase items. But what we really want to know is just how valuable is this money compared to the real world. First, let's examine some of the things you can buy in-game. Let's start with a basic item, ropes. These items can be purchased for 10 copper coins. Copper coins are hard to value, so we have to do some conversions into gold. There are 10,000 copper coins in a single gold coin. If we assume a gold coin in Terraria is similar to a real world gold coin, we can assume they are valued at around $2,000. This means a copper coin is worth about 20 cents. Ouch. This in turn means you just bought three feet of rope for about $1.80. That's a pretty good deal. Given what we know now, what else can we consider when it comes to Terraria buying power? Let's take a moment to ask a question. How much would you pay for a piggy bank? Nothing special, just a small container that holds some loose change. I did just a quick search and found a piggy bank for sale and it was priced at $10. Turns out you can buy a piggy bank in Terraria too. Without looking it up, how much do you think the piggy bank would cost in Terraria? Well, let's break down what we know. There are a hundred copper coins in a silver coin. A piggy bank costs 89 silver coins or 8,900 copper coins. We also know that each copper coin is worth about 20 cents. So that piggy bank that was meant to save you coins just cost you about $1,780. Maybe just skip the piggy bank and hold on to your coins. With that, I think it's time to bring this episode of The Science Of to a close. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Let me know if you think I missed anything down below in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. I want to continue to develop and improve this series, and with the holidays right around the corner, I imagine The Science Of will return early next year. We have several other games already planned, if you like Oxygen Not Included or Dredge, keep an eye out for the science of. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. See ya!